I'm here because our, our generation specifically, Gen Z, these 20-year-old kids, they don't want to step out. They think this election is so shallow. Oh, I don't want to step out just because I'm not exactly sure. But we have to realize the deeper meaning behind this election. It's not just politics. This is truly evil. This is a spiritual war in our country. The disastrous effects of Republicans capitulating to the demands of fundamentalist sects of Christianity and their hijacking of the party's policy platform are being felt now more than ever as fringe groups and their belief systems have now become mainstream in the conservative movement. The Democrats and the fake news media want to constantly talk about, oh, President Trump is a convicted felon. Well, you want to know something? The man that I worship is also a convicted felon. And he was murdered on a Roman cross. Before you take this historic vote today, one week before Christmas, I want you to keep this in mind. When Jesus was falsely accused of treason, Pontius Pilate gave Jesus the opportunity to face his accusers. During that sham trial, Pontius Pilate afforded more rights to Jesus than the Democrats have afforded this president in this process. If our government actually cared about keeping the church and state separate, sitting Congress people like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Barry Loudermilk would have, at the very least, gotten censured by their colleagues for equating the leader of their party to Jesus. Um, my first thought went to, well, Jesus Christ died for my sins. Jesus died for me. And so I, it connects in my brain that way. Like, okay, he's doing this for us as a country to make the changes we need to make. And he's the target where we don't have to be. But because this attitude was already present and spreading among the base, no Republican would dare stick their neck out and try to rein in their own party's blasphemy and play clean up with the supermajority of other Christians who rightfully feel offended that anyone, let alone our elected officials, would, you know, make such a comparison. Do you think Donald Trump is picked by God? I believe that everyone is. Just like Joe Biden being in office, I believe that God put him there for a reason. I don't believe in coincidence, and God has... Everything that happens, he has planned and he has he has prepared the steps. So if Donald Trump were to lose, you'd accept the election results? I would accept it, yeah. And I think that if Kamala gets in and our country plummets, which it will if she gets into office, I think that'll be judgment on our nation. And it's only a time for us to go, grow stronger in our beliefs in God. Because as we can see, the world is evil. There is truly something anti-human, which is against our human nature and so we have to realize that this is spiritual and spiritual the realm does exist and so we have to realize that this isn't just all shallow like they want to make it seem mental gymnastics to cope with trump's 2020 election loss aside the talking point about how this election is a battle between quote good and evil and quote god versus satan has sadly been the main focus of influential evangelicals since trump's rise to power with the african-american segment of the population who are coming out and saying They've done the same crap that they're doing to Donald Trump. They've done it to us for years. They've indicted us for nonsense. They've thrown the legal system at us. They haven't given us a chance in hell. It's been a rigged system. Um, they've literally made my father a martyr with, with certain segments of the population that they otherwise you know, claim to own. And um, I'm telling you, it's backfiring. Self-proclaimed MAGA prophet and Eric and Laura Trump confidant Julie Green claims that God himself has consistently told her that he specifically chose, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> that he chose Donald Trump to leave the country. Uh, definitely not, you know, beating the cult allegations. It is a spiritual war. Of course, it's Trump versus Harris, but it's also God versus the enemy, good versus evil, however you want to cast it. There's something right. much bigger going on here. And if Christians don't vote, we are going to lose this election. Donald Trump needs you. The law is based on the Ten Commandments. We need every Christian out there voting or this yes. country is going to be lost. And the spiritual warfare coming against us now will be nothing compared to the spiritual warfare that will come to us if Kamala Harris is elected. Was she can look presidential. And that's, we'll go to this later. That's the seduction of what I would say is yeah. witchcraft. That's the manipulation of imagery that creates an impression contrary to the truth, but it seduces you into seeing it. So that's, so that spirit, that occult spirit, I believe is operating on her and through her, similar to with Obama. Jezebel may be the spirit you're up against, 
But then Trump has like an Elijah mantle on him, probably from the intercession of a million Christians. We've got to lean into this thing because the Elijah mantle can break the spell of witchcraft off America. God yeah. can tear the veil. And unless that veil is torn, we have a lot working against us. I saw Kamala Harris as being the one that the devil was going to use to push through the White House. And that I saw that early on. Christian nationalist pastor Lance Wallnau is the same Lance Wallnau who helped organize and spoke at this Courage Tour event outside of Pittsburgh featuring J.D. Vance as the marquee speaker. There's a, a pastor speaking here. He's been very, very outspoken mm -hmm. about his disdain for Kamala Harris. And uh, he has accused her of being part of the occult. Um, do you believe that Kamala Harris is, is part of the occult, part of witchcraft? No, I think she is the devil. <laughs> do you believe Kamala Harris is a witch? Yeah. Do you think she's a witch? Yeah, I do. Like an actual witch that practices witchcraft? No. Oh, she's okay. just goofy. goofy. She's crazy. Did you, did you know the pastor said that she was an actual witch? No, I didn't hear that. Regardless of whether or not they heard Walnow's actual words, the sentiment remains exactly the same because the right-wing evangelical Christian base is unified in their messaging. I'm a devout Christian. I do believe... 100% wholeheartedly that we are image bearers of Christ. And so in that, we can't destroy the image of Christ in the womb, out of the womb. You look at other countries and they're doing eugenics. This is going to happen here. And abortion is just step one in that plan. Eugenics, you, you mean like, like based on like genes, trying to get people with the same genes? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, did, you, did you hear Donald Trump saying uh, two days ago that immigrants were people with bad genes? I did not hear that. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. I would say that all immigrants, no matter where you are, no matter what race you are, ethnicity, you are created in the image of God. What he's really saying is, yeah, even though I don't agree with him thinking that immigrants aren't human beings, that's still not enough to take away my vote because it's all God's plan. And when you have pastors saying stuff like this, it's no wonder why so many Christians vote against one of the religion's most positive core beliefs, loving thy neighbor as you love yourself you're going to have a spiritual consequence. And God said it to tell him. He said, Samuel, tell him. Tell him right now. They're going to get what they want, but they're going to come back to me and they're going to whine and beg for mercy and I'm not going to hear them. I can't believe that there isn't going to be a spiritual consequence to a Christian who votes for her. I can't believe it. No one can convince me otherwise. If you can and are willing, please become a paid member here at TYT Sports. And or go to tyt.com slash join. In addition, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Appreciate it. Have a great day.